In today's project diary, I will teach you how to care for your fruit trees and do an update on my repotted trees from last year. Hi and welcome to Project Diaries. In today's video, I'm going to do an update on my fruit trees. Now, if you haven't seen my video previously on how to transplant um, bare root stocks into a new pot, there's the link on the screen now. Um, but as you know, I planted these last year, and what would happen is they don't do anything for the first year, but the second year they'll then go into bloom and start producing fruit. So don't be too impatient on these. So in today's video, I'm going to give you an update on what's happening, how to give them the most amount of nutrition, and the progression throughout the year. So here are my trees in early December and they're starting to bud already but it's slightly worrying because a lot of fruit need to go through a chilled dormancy phase for them to produce fruit in the following year. So I'm hoping we do get some frost or some really cold weather soon so these can then develop uh, and hopefully produce more fruit next year. Thankfully we did have a couple of months of really cold weather. We didn't have any snow but it was freezing so this was really good for the dormancy phase and overnight it just became spring and within a few weeks you could see these leaves growing. Now the first thing you want to do is get rid of any of the weeds that have been growing over the, the spring time. It's, these are basically just going to suck out any of the nutrients that are already in the soil and it's already starting to become nutrient deficient already so you just need to get rid of these as quickly as possible. Now you really want to clear this base of everything that you can find. I'm not actually sure what this is. <laughs> I'm just going to get rid of that. But when you're pulling the uh, the weeds out, you really want to make sure you pull the entire root out completely. If you just pull the green off, it's just going to keep coming back and growing stronger and stronger. So really dig down deep and try and get rid of that weed root. But try not to dislodge any of the tree roots itself. Some of these weeds can actually grow something called a tap root, which is a really long extended root that grows all the way down into the soil just to pull out as much nutrients as possible. So you really don't want these feed hungry weeds to take out all the nutrients from this soil. You want to make sure that this soil is nutrient dense as possible because this tree, this is all this tree has to feed throughout the year. So you need to make sure it's just the tree that is pulling out all the source and all the nutrients from this soil and there's nothing else just bleeding it dry. Even moss and things like that, you want to get rid of all of the seeds that are growing on the top as much as possible so these seeds don't germinate and then grow into more weeds. Now you can see how low the soil line has become and this is basically just all the nutrients and the compost is broken down and been absorbed by the tree so you're going to need to top this up in the next stage. It's amazing that I've lost around three to four inches this year. I usually have it around an inch or two from the top to help with watering, but it's amazing just how much soil has disappeared out of this pot over the year. Now this is the important part and it's imperative that you replace this soil with really nutrient dense mix. Now I definitely suggest using my potting mix here. There's lots of potassium, lots of phosphorus. You really want to avoid high nitrogen at this point uh, because that will just promote loads of green and not much fruit. But if you want to see the full video, here's the link on the screen now. This will also give you a light, fluffy, well-draining soil that also holds a good level of moisture and doesn't become too dense. You really don't want to top up your fruit tree pots with just garden dirt. One, you don't know if there's any harmful funguses that can then go on to causing lots of diseases and could go on to causing this tree lots of damage over the growing period. It's also going to be too heavy and uh, it won't be as nutrient dense as the mix that I've made in my previous video. Look at this, this is really fluffy, this is amazing. This is going to be perfect for this tree to get as, as much feed out of it over this growing period as possible. So once you've topped up your container, you just want to flatten it out slightly and make sure that it's not above the original soil line for the tree. It doesn't matter if you go over a little bit, but just try and get it to the original soil line as you can see it's there uh, and just get that uh, as low or as on that mark as possible because you don't want to suffocate the, the base of the tree because it can rot if you, if you bury it too deep. So the next step is watering. Now a lot of people just seem to water the base of the plant and with a really heavy spray. This will basically just pull all the soil away that you've just put there. So try and do it lightly. Try and get a nice fine water spray if you're using a hose or a watering can. Just make sure it's really light and you don't disrupt the new soil that you've added. You also want to make sure you water the tree really heavily and deeply. 
in and around the root system as well. The water will naturally be pulled to the edges of the container and if you have a dark container it may dry up a lot quicker if you're in a hotter area. To also help with the soil drying out it's a really good idea to add a mulch if you have it at this point. So here they are all finished and as you can see I've done a really deep watering and made sure the water's coming out of the bottom. The next thing you want to look for is any pest attacks. Now these can come in different, uh, different styles and different varieties because there's so many different pests that are going to want to come and eat your fruit, especially birds, but there's so many different insects that want to do this as well. So I'm just going to give you a close up. So if you look at your tree leaves closely, you may see that they're starting to curl over. Now a lot of people may think that this is through nutrient deficiency, but it's actually lots of little pests underneath that are sucking the life out of this leaf. Now one of the best things to do is just get rid of this leaf completely. There's so many bugs and eggs underneath here. As you can see, look, they're, they're breeding really rapidly under this one. And it's a nice protection for them to live under. So it's just get rid of the, the, this leaf and dispose of it however you see fit. So looking at these other ones as well, it's going to be really tricky for me to do this one-handed trying to film at the same time. But, uh, if I can just curl it around and, and show you the underneath. Um, so the pest, yeah, as you can see here, there's, there's aphids uh, and lots of eggs. So you want to get rid of that one as well. So some of the um, pests that will attack this plant are aphids and spider mite. But not all leaf curl is caused by pests. It's really good to look out for certain bacteria, diseases, funguses and different disorders within your tree. I've done a whole tutorial on identifying different leaf curls so check out the link on the screen now. This will hopefully help you identify what is causing your leaf curl early on so it doesn't affect the rest of the tree and doesn't hinder any of the blossoms or fruiting throughout the year. So as you can see, my trees are fruiting really lovely. They've already gone through the blossom phase and there's really not that much damage uh, throughout this year. There has been quite a lot of aphids and things like that, but I've got on top of it really quickly. As you can see, my cherries are fruiting here. These are really nice. And this is my apple tree. Uh, they haven't started to fruit yet, but it's, it's looking quite good. There is some significant damage from the wind um, and other uh, weather problems, but there's no pest attacks on my apple tree at the moment fingers crossed it's just my um, cherry tree here and my pear tree that seems to be attacked right now but I'm going to get on top of that as quickly as possible and I suggest that you do the same thing here uh, this, this looks like uh, I think this is spider mite yes I'm definitely going to use my insecticide on this as well now there's absolutely no need for you to go out and buy loads of commercial insecticides that are really expensive you can make them so easy out of household stuff you've got around the kitchen Here's a link if you want to know how to do that. But here's uh, here's what I've, one I've done already. I've been wanting to say that forever. Here's one I made earlier, and here's how to use it. Now I cannot stress this point enough. If you're making insecticides, pesticides, repellents, anything homemade, always test one leaf first. Spray it lightly on a leaf after the sun has set or before the sunrise. It's usually best to do it in the evening and spray them lightly on one leaf first and then test it for a 48 hour period to see if you've made the mix right. I've had lots of people messaging me saying that I've killed their plant and their plants are burnt because they've made the mix wrong or applied it to their whole garden without first doing a test run so before you go ahead and spray it over everything make sure you make a really light weaker solution first do a 48 hour test on one leaf and then apply it accordingly if it's good for that leaf after a 48 hour period then spray it over the rest of that plant but remember that each leaf has a different porous value so the stages of a fruit tree, including this cherry tree, are the dormancy period, which is over the winter once the leaves have started to drop from the fall. Then you should see this budding stage, which is the growth over the following year. This happens to be a little bit early. Then the buds will burst, becoming almost entirely green. And you should start seeing the tips start to split and separate. Later on, the green buds should then burst into this beautiful white, a week or so later, it will then go into my favourite stage of the year, which is the blossoms. Blooming technically begins when the first flower opens, but it's more commonly known when the tree is full of blooms. This is one of the most important times because it's the pollination period. Now the insecticide that I suggested that you make at home earlier is a contact spray only. 
so it only works when you spray it directly onto the pests. At the blossoming stage like this, I wouldn't recommend using any insecticides or pesticides at all. Using commercial pesticides could also kill beneficial insects like bees, hoverflies and many other pollinators. The simple fact is, if your tree doesn't get pollinated, you don't get any fruit. The next stage is when all the petals fall, leaving the stems. And if you're lucky, you'll see a slight swelling at the base of the flower and this will hint that it's been pollinated correctly. You may also want to give your trees a low nitrogen feed at least once or twice a week. It would also then go into the fruit setting stage where the fruit will then start to swell. This is also called in the shuck. At the fruiting stage I would definitely recommend putting some kind of netting system over your trees to stop the birds from damaging or eating all of your fruit. Now the time of harvest may vary according to variety. So just play it by ear and be patient enough to watch your fruit mature. Using apples as an example, once they hit a nice mature size, if you give the apple a slight twist and there's resistance, the apple's not ready. But if they pop off really easily, then they're perfect. Well, hopefully that's helped you grow some amazing fruit this year. I can't wait to get my teeth into what I'm growing. Um, this is my favorite time of year now because it's about to be harvest. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and good luck growing this year. If you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases, click the subscribe button here. Here are some links to some of my other videos. And if you tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group where thousands of people are sharing photos and ideas daily. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.